we're talking about bossa nova and specifically how to play it on this thing. So first we have to know what is bossa nova. Translated from Portuguese, it literally means new wave. It's a style of music that started in the 50s in Brazil and more specifically in Rio de Janeiro. At the time, around Ipanema and Copacabana, all these great musicians were getting together and working on this new style of music. Musicians like Antonio Carlos Jobim, uh, lyricist Vinicius de Moraes, uh, composer Carlos Lira, Roberto Menescal, Joao de Nadu, and a lot of other musicians as well. We can't list everybody right now. And this music kept forming and kept evolving. And then in 1959, everybody else got to hear it. And that is when Joao Gilberto released the album Chega de Saudade, the title track, of course, by Antonio Carlos Jobim. In that album is where kind of the rest of the world got introduced to what had been going on in Rio for a while now. And we also all got introduced to the Joao Gilberto guitar pattern that he played on the bossa nova. And that guitar pattern is what we're going to take and put on the vibraphone today because that's the basis for the whole bossa nova feel. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is learn the pattern. We have to figure out how this works. So when we take the pattern, the first thing we need to know is it is in 2-4, right? And it is a one bar pattern. So it's quite simple. The bass is just going to be down beats, just quarter notes. And a little side note about the bass, it's going to stay on the root the whole time. Uh, in a samba, you might hear bum, 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 right? You hear root and fifth and things like that. In bossa nova, it's pretty much always just going to repeat the root. That's kind of one of the main differences you'll hear between the two styles. Okay, so back to the pattern. We have quarter notes on the bass, and then we're going to have the chords on top of that. So on the first beat, we have two eighth notes, and then on the second beat, we'll play the chord over 1 16th, so on the second 16th note of the beat. So one and E, one and E, dut, 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 da. And that's our pattern, pretty simple. So what we do now is we have to figure out how to play our bass and chords on the vibraphone. So what we're gonna do is if we think about our vibraphone mallets numbered one, two, three, four, so from the player's perspective, the lowest mallet is number one. We're gonna play the bass with our one mallet and the chords with mallets two, three, and four. Okay, and we'll start out with a simple two, five, one. All right, so there it is, that's the pattern, right? Now, we need to make it more bossa nova-y. A lot of times in bossa novas, you'll hear chord substitutions that make the bass line smoother, right? Right now we have a big jump, we're jumping from D all the way down to G and back up to C. If we replace that G7 with a D flat seven, what's known as a tritone substitution, now we can have a chromatic bass line as well as having an extra chromatic line uh, at the top of the progression making everything flow a little bit smoother. And this is something you would hear a lot in bossa nova. So let's check out what that sounds like. Now that we know the basic groove, we can start messing around with it and doing variations. And the most common variation you will hear uh, Joao Gilberto and lots of other players do is what we call an anticipation. So what we're gonna do is instead of waiting till the downbeat of the next bar to change chords, we'll actually change chords on the last 16th note of the measure. So one 16th note early. So instead of one and E one, we'll get there one and E up. Oh we'll get there just one sixteenth note early.
Now notice, I didn't do it every time, okay? Sometimes you will do it every single time, and that gives a nice forward motion because we don't have any more downbeats and everything kind of has an upbeat vibe to it. Uh, and sometimes we'll go back and forth maybe to fit better with the melody. It's just gonna be kind of a trial and error when you first start doing this to figure out where you do and don't want to. So we now have two rhythmic ways to play the pattern. So let's think of another way to play it on the vibraphone. One thing I like to do a lot is to incorporate dead strokes. So what that means is I'm gonna hit the bar and I'm gonna leave my mallet on the bar so it doesn't ring but I am going to let my bass note ring. So mallets two, three, and four, dead strokes. Mallet one is still going to ring. And I'm going to fill in all the 16th notes. So I'm gonna hear Just filling in those 16th notes, kind of almost acting like a shaker is present as well. So I can get a little more rhythmic interest going on in what I'm playing, especially if there aren't very many people in the group, you can cover kind of two parts at once. Now our final variation is super simple. If you have a bass player, take out the bass from the last variation, and now instead of doing dead strokes, just pedal a little bit on every single note from the pattern. So instead of doing a little accent like we did on dead strokes, you'll just pedal and let those ring for the full 16th note, and then the rest of it will be with the pedal up. It's the same effect, but I find personally, it's a lot less effort. Now let's talk about some other resources that you can use to learn more about Bossa Nova after you're done watching this video. The first is the book Bossa Nova by Rui Castro. This book will not teach you how to play a Bossa Nova. It will teach you the who, what, where, when, why, and how of Bossa Nova. The players involved, where everything happened. There's maps of like the exact clubs things happened in. There's a great discography. You'll find out about tons of musicians. I thought I knew a lot about Bossa Nova, and then when I got this book, I found out there were still a lot of things that I didn't know. And so it's really fascinating and worth the read. If you're learning a new style of music, it's important to know where it comes from. Don't just grab some notes and say, oh, I know all about this. Find out where it's coming from, find out about the history of it so that you have a more complete picture of the music you're playing and you can be a little more effective in conveying that when you perform. Now, as far as books on how to actually play uh, Bossa Nova, my first recommendation is the Brazilian Guitar Book by Nelson Faria. He is a fantastic Brazilian guitarist. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called Um Café La Um Casa. I'll put a little link below. Uh, it's great. He's got tons of interviews with Brazilian musicians. If you don't speak Portuguese, there are a bunch that have some English subtitles, so you can find those at least. Um, this is the book I started with 10, 15 years ago, something when I really started studying Brazilian music and decided I needed to know more. And I found it kind of invaluable as just a reference if you kind of forget how something works or you wanted to double check something. He's probably got a transcription or an explanation of it in here. And then to go along with that, we have inside the Brazilian rhythm section, also Nelson Freya, but this time with pianist Cliff Corman. And this book has some transcriptions of full rhythm section parts. If you have a larger band, you can figure out how to make all the parts fit together. Because kind of everything we did here was, you're by yourself, this is how you have to tackle it. So there's really good information in there. And for me, just having more examples is always better. The more examples I get, the happier I am about it. I hope that helps. One thing I didn't mention was how I practice this stuff. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pick a tune, Bossa Nova Standard, Great American Songbook Standard, kind of anything, play the whole thing down, comping just one basic Bossa Nova pattern, 
do it again with anticipation variations, do it again with dead strokes, and do it in every key. And so, yeah, that's gonna add up. You know, we're multiplying all these 12 keys a few times, you know, you're doing it 48 times or something. And then you do that to a bunch of different tunes. And yeah, it's a lot of practicing, but our goal is to internalize this pattern so that it's second nature, so that you get a chart on the gig and you gotta read it, you can just play through the changes and it doesn't bother you even though it's new because you've internalized all these concepts. If you have any other styles you want me to talk about, uh, let me know in the comments. And if I can explain it, then I'd be happy to make a video about it. Uh, Samba is up next, so that one's already taken care of. And I do have a couple others on my list as well. If you have any resources, uh, books I didn't mention, albums that you think are particularly good, your favorite bossa novas, uh, let me know in the comments because I'd like to know because I'm not done learning about this and I'm sure anybody else watching this would be curious as well. And finally, head on over to my website, ericmartinpercussion.com. You can find my jazz compositions, my educational books, like my book on sight reading, and uh, you can also find my albums. So it would be nice if you could go check that out if you're interested.